Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are talking about a potential roadmap for Tesla's rollout of their new 4680 battery cells, and then we have a few other news stories to go through on Tesla as well. We'll start off with batteries, where we have quite a bit of new information coming from a very active Elon on Twitter today. And the first tweet I want to highlight here is on the 4680 cell and Giga Berlin. Elon, in response to Holmars on Twitter, says, quote, Berlin will use 4680 cell with structural battery pack and front and rear single piece castings, also a new paint system. A lot of new technology will happen in Berlin, which means significant production risk. Fremont and Shanghai will transition in about two years when new tech is proven, end quote. This whole situation with the ramp up of Giga Berlin has caused quite a bit of confusion because we do expect that to happen sometime pretty early in 2021, probably sometime in Q2 would be the start of production. But Tesla, on the other hand, said a lot of the technology during battery day was still in sort of a pilot phase. And I think there were a lot of assumptions that initially this new cell would be used in the Plaid Model S, which we know isn't expected until late 2021. So that's where a bit of the confusion comes in of, okay, what cells are going to be used in that initial Model Y production pretty early next year from Giga Berlin. With this tweet from Elon, it appears that we now have a pretty conclusive answer that from the beginning, it seems like Tesla will be trying to use those 4680 tabless battery cells, as well as the sort of cell to pack or really cell to vehicle structure battery format. As for the chemistry used in those cells, Tesla during the battery day presentation split it up into three groups, iron based, nickel plus manganese, and high nickel in terms of the cathodes. And the Model Y image did appear in the nickel plus manganese section of that diversified approach. So presumably that's what we would see in the Model Y, though Elon did add in another tweet that quote, we do expect to make heavy use of LFP for medium range cars and stationary storage, end quote, with LFP being lithium iron phosphate. I think one of the key questions around the ramp up of the Model Y from Giga Berlin is how Tesla handles that and the potential Osborning effect that that could have on Model Y from, let's say, Shanghai or from Fremont. This could be one of those ways. If Tesla actually starts off with a lithium iron phosphate Model Y in Berlin, that would be obviously a lower end vehicle that may have specs more comparable to what Tesla is producing today in Fremont and presumably soon in Shanghai. On the other hand, it would be a little bit unusual for Tesla to start up production with sort of that lower end vehicle. Usually they start on the higher end and work their way down. So I think whichever way Tesla approaches it is going to have its own set of issues, and that's going to be one of the most interesting things to see how it gets handled next year. We'll set that aside for now. I want to talk more about the production and the timelines here. Holmar's reaction to this on Twitter, I'm not going to read all of it here, but basically he said that Elon had sandbagged the presentation during battery day in terms of sort of the timelines. And Elon replied to those tweets by saying, quote, Prototypes are a piece of cake, but a high volume production of a new technology is extremely hard. It takes much longer than people think to climb the production S curve. I can't emphasize enough that production is by far the hard part. End quote. This was something that Elon emphasized consistently throughout the battery day presentation, saying that not all of this stuff is fully functional yet in a full high speed production type of way, just working really right now in a pilot line and with somewhat low yields or not yields up to what they would like quite yet. So that's what Tesla is working on figuring out right now at that pilot line. And once they do that, hopefully they can expand the concepts used in that pilot line pretty quickly in Giga Berlin. But I think that is the uncertainty that remains. If the main issue is yield, Tesla knows how to set all this stuff up and they can get some production out of it. They may just not be able to produce at a high rate for some period of time until those yields improve. Obviously, it's going to be more capitally efficient if Tesla can figure that out on the pilot line before expanding dramatically in Giga Berlin, but it's also not like it's a binary thing. There's a lot of new technology here, a lot of different steps in this process that Tesla is working on making more efficient, and I'm sure some of those advancements, those new technologies are ready to go right now with high yields, while others, such as the dry battery electrode process, will probably take Tesla a little bit more time to perfect. But just because a part of that process isn't perfect yet doesn't mean that there's not going to be any production. It just means that production is going to be constrained until Tesla can improve that. The other element here that we haven't talked about yet is what about Giga Texas? It seems pretty clear that if Giga Berlin is going to be using the new cell right off the bat, then Giga Texas probably also doing the same. As we've talked about, the targeted date for first substantial completion for Giga Texas is May 1st, 2021. So if we put all that together, it seems like by Q3 next year, Tesla is aiming to have these new cells being produced at three locations, the pilot line in Fremont, 
Giga Berlin, and Giga Texas. So let's break down how this all might fit together and how it might spread across the various product lines. And we'll start with a couple points Tesla made at Battery Day. So the first is the plan. Tesla said that in 2022, they hope to produce 100 gigawatt hours of battery cells in-house. We also know that the pilot line in Fremont, they hope to get that to an output of 10 gigawatt hours per year. But over time, they hope to have each assembly line be capable of an output of 20 gigawatt hours per year. So piecing all these things together, I've put together a hypothetical 4680 battery roadmap. Emphasis on hypothetical because a lot of this is just guesswork at this point in time, but hopefully we can kind of use this as a starting point and have a discussion about it and slowly gain more confidence in this roadmap as time goes by. So to orientate those of you that are watching on video, on the left hand side I have the products and then a hypothetical average capacity for each battery pack inside of those products. Then I have a table with the number of units from each location, the Fremont Pilot Line, Giga Berlin, and Giga Texas, and then a second table showing the amount of batteries that would be required in gigawatt hours for that level of production each year. My starting point is to work backward from that 100 gigawatt hour target for 2022, while also using that 20 gigawatt hour line capacity. Now, because that would be sort of end state for the line, I don't want to focus too much on that. Obviously, Tesla might build out more lines with lower output initially and then ramp them up over time. But again, this is just hypothetical. So I have sort of that one line of 10 gigawatt hours from Fremont, two lines for 40 gigawatt hours total from Berlin, and three lines for 60 gigawatt hours total from Texas. And then I think we can think of these as sort of incrementally happening in the timeline. So Fremont should be first, Berlin should be second, and then Texas should follow shortly after Berlin. And then if we think about this as end state, end of 2022, Tesla should be sort of fully producing at this capacity from these facilities. That should happen in succession. So if we think about the comments that Tesla made during battery day, it seems like over the next year they want to get Fremont, the pilot line, up to about 10 gigawatt hours. So let's say that takes, you know, nine months. That could happen in June of 21. Let's say it then takes another nine months for them to ramp up to 40 gigawatt hours in Berlin. That could be March of 2022. And then another six months to get to that 60 gigawatt hours from Giga Texas. That could be September of 2022, and that could put them in a decent position to either hit a run rate of 100 gigawatt hours per year in 2022, or actually total production of 100 gigawatt hours for the year. It sounded like that was the actual target, the latter one, but obviously even achieving that run rate would be a pretty big success from really starting at zero earlier this year. So if we look at how this might break down by product line, I had to make some assumptions here on battery pack size. I have 90 kilowatt hours for the 3 and Y, assuming that over time those do increase with this new battery technology, but obviously that will depend on how much is lithium iron phosphate versus how much is nickel based. I do think eventually in the top of the line 3 and Y, we end up seeing 100 kilowatt hour packs and maybe the 75 kilowatt hour pack becomes that new standard range. Elon did indicate that they think that 300 miles is sort of the new low bar for range, so I think that makes sense. So let's say 90 kilowatt hours on average. The next product line would be the S and the X. Here I'm just saying the Plaid variants. Obviously at first that seems to just be the Model S, but Elon did mention a Plaid X in the past, so we could see that develop at some point. Anyway, I'm saying 135 kilowatt hours for that pack. That should get them to that 520 plus mile range. Then for the Cybertruck here, I'm estimating 175 kilowatt hour pack. I think those packs are gonna range somewhere between maybe 80 kilowatt hours and 200 kilowatt hours, but I do expect at least initially a lot of that production to be absorbed from the tri-motor version. I just think demand is super high and I think a lot of people spend a lot of money on trucks. If Tesla could sell, you know, 100,000 S and X combined per year, I think they could sell 100,000 Cybertrucks pretty easily, even at that top spec price. So maybe it's a little bit high on average, but should be in the ballpark. Then for the Roadster, I'm just saying a 200 kilowatt hour pack because that demo Roadster that they had seemed to have just 200 kilowatt hour packs stacked on top of each other. And then for the Semi, Seems like the packs will range somewhere between 600 and 1,000 kilowatt hours, so I'm just splitting the difference here at 800. So let's start with the Fremont vehicles because, again, I do think those will happen first. This is the pilot line. Tesla is going to use these to test the cells and the production process. These are going to go into products before Tesla ramps up these cells and starts selling them from Berlin. This is the local testing point for Tesla. This is where they have their core engineers developing this technology. So this is going to be the pilot line, regardless of what Elon says about Berlin and the timeline there. So why I think that's interesting is because we already know that the Plaid is going to be late 2021. 
We haven't really heard a whole lot on the Roadster, so TBD on that. But we have heard about the Semi. Back in June, early June, there was a leaked email from Elon saying that now is the time to bring the Semi to volume production. We also know that Tesla is planning to use the initial Semi production internally, so it makes it a great test vehicle for the initial production of these cells as well. So I think Tesla is going to use the initial production from this Fremont Pilot line in the Semi. And once the production rate is ramped up, I expect a lot of these batteries to continue to be dedicated for the Semi. Once Texas gets ramped up, that could obviously change. And I think if there ends up being a non-plaid variant that has a larger pack for the S and the X, then eventually all of this pilot production could just go to S and X as well as the Roadster. But if it were to be dedicated partially to the Semi at 800 kilowatt hours per pack, they could do 8,000 of those per year. And that would take about two thirds of the production from that 10 gigawatt hour capacity. That would leave them with enough for 7,500 Roadsters per year at 200 kilowatt hours a piece and just over 15,000 S and X Plaid variants at 135 kilowatt hours a piece. So then we move to Berlin and this one's a little bit simpler. I think all this will be dedicated for Model 3 and Y at 90 kilowatt hours a pack. If they do 400,000 per year, that's 36 gigawatt hours. That would leave about four gigawatt hours from that two line or 40 gigawatt hour total for energy storage. And again, this isn't final state Giga Berlin, but I think this is something that Tesla could be trying to achieve by maybe middle of 2022. Next then would be Giga Texas. Here I have 300,000 three slash Y. We don't need quite as many here because we do have Fremont production of both of those vehicles currently. So I could even see an argument for a little bit less than that from Texas. Maybe it ends up being something like just 200,000 Model Y, no Model 3, something like that. But if it's in that ballpark, at 175 kilowatt hours a piece for the Cybertruck, that would leave room for about 150,000 Cybertrucks per year. That's about 26 gigawatt hours, and that would leave just over 10% of production again for energy at about seven gigawatt hours. I think Elon said at Battery Day that Cybertruck could eventually support production of maybe a quarter million vehicles or so, so I felt like this was a pretty good number initially. All right, so again, that's all just hypothetical, but please let me know what you think. I would hope to sort of keep this and adjust it over time as we get more information. We do still have a couple other topics to cover here, so for that, I wanna hop back to Elon's Twitter, where he was elaborating a little bit more on how all of this production ramping may go. Someone asked essentially how this compared to the production hell that was Model 3, and Elon said, quote, the Model 3 production ramp was sheer agony for two years, but that was do or die for Tesla. No US car company has reached high volume production with sustained free cash flow in about 100 years. Hundreds of car startups all died or were absorbed for peanuts by a big three, end quote. And then later on this thread, he added, quote, but now we understand production much better. It will be our primary competitive advantage long term, end quote. So I think therein lies the essence of what we're going to see from Tesla over the next two years. Does Tesla really understand production better? Or do all of these new technologies lead to some of the same problems that we saw for Model 3? Personally, I'm very optimistic. We've seen great results from Giga Shanghai so far from Model Y. The Model 3 was really Tesla's first foray into high volume manufacturing, and they tried to do a lot. They learned a lot. And I think over the last year, we've seen those lessons shine through very clearly. Tesla is still doing a lot of new things, but a lot of these things are centered around simplifying manufacturing. And not to say that wasn't the case for Model 3 originally, but that was before Tesla had done that high volume manufacturing. So they have a much better understanding now of what the pain points are and how to slowly and hopefully effectively diminish those pain points over time. And I think the casting machine is a great example of that. Even that though, that was something that Elon mentioned as being somewhat problematic in terms of production for Tesla on the Model Y initially. So I think they're going to continue to have challenges like that, but not to the extent by any means of what we saw with the Model 3 those first six to nine months. On this thread, Tesla owner Silicon Valley brought in the good point that we have heard Tesla make in the past, that really each new factory is a product and those products continue to get better over time. Elon replied to that saying, yes, the Gigafactory is the hardest and most critical product. And then Viv asked a question that I've seen pop up a lot was if Tesla would actually license any of sort of the factory equipment to other manufacturers. And Elon replied to that saying, quote, that would be like licensing Battlestar Galactica. Actually building continuously evolving gargantuan factories is the hard part. Lots of people who worked at Tesla Gigafactories now work at competitors, but none of those companies have made one, end quote. So not too surprising, but glad to see that question answered. And then the last tweet today that I wanna to go through is kind of where this all started from. 
and brings us back to yesterday's conversation on Mercedes and their updated strategy. Holmars had tweeted a comparison video of Tesla talking about their engineering focus at Battery Day versus sort of Mercedes talking about from a more financial focus perspective. And Elon replied to that saying, quote, I do so wish that more companies would put down their spreadsheets for a moment and focus on making products that move your heart, end quote. This is exactly the idea we were talking about yesterday, the profit motive. Expanding on that conversation, rarely does more profit come from the goal of generating more profit. Usually that's a side effect of creating more value. If that's not the focus of your business, well, the chances are that you've peaked and you're on your way down. All right, last thing today, but certainly, certainly not least, we'd have another leaked email from Elon about their production target for the year. I think this originally or first was reported by Tasmanian. It was apparently sent to all Tesla employees about potentially hitting 500,000 vehicles produced for the year. Elon says, quote, it will be tough, but super exciting if we can exceed half a million cars made in a single year for the first time in Tesla history, end quote. It then continues to say, quote, when we started Tesla just over 16 years ago, I never thought we would get this far, but thanks to your hard work and ingenuity, we actually have a chance of making half a million cars in a single year. Wow, that is so incredible. This all comes down to Q4. Please take whatever steps you can think of to improve output while increasing quality, end quote. So far this year, Tesla has produced about 330,000 vehicles, so they need 170,000 more in Q4 versus the 145,000 produced in Q3. But as I just talked about in my Q3 delivery and production estimate episode, Q4, I think there's a really good path for Tesla to somewhere just above 180,000 produced. So I actually think Elon's email here fits pretty well with that forecast. So I'm still pretty happy with that for now, but of course we'll revisit that towards the end of the quarter. In terms of his focus here on production, maybe there's a chance that he is focusing on production instead of deliveries to help shift that target from being deliveries to being production externally, just because logistically it's going to be harder to deliver 500,000 vehicles than it would be to produce those. I still think Tesla can do both. I had them forecast for the year at production of about 509,000 vehicles. I think that would put them just a little bit over 500,000 delivered. But even if production is a little bit lower at, let's say, 505,000, then it might be too tough for Tesla to hit that delivery number. So this email doesn't change too much for me other than to give me a little bit more confidence that Tesla does feel that they have a shot at that 500,000 production number, which I think is a positive. Last quick thing for today, the interview episode that I had teased, I don't know, maybe 10 days or so ago with me being a guest on another podcast, it does sound like that'll be published tomorrow. I'll obviously share links when that is available, so keep an eye out for that. Because of that, I may not publish an episode tomorrow. It depends on what's going on news-wise. But if it's a relatively quiet day, I think it'll be better for me to focus on some other work. So we'll just play it by ear. But as always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And I'll either see you tomorrow or on Friday. Thank you.